Today I'm going to present our paper entitled Things You May Not Know About Andre Peckers, a Systematic Study Based on Whole System Emulation. This is a joint work with uh, UC Riverside, Grandma Tech, Cornell University, Indiana University in Bloomington, and Peking University. So uh, as you can see from this title that we're talking about the Andre Peking study. So the first thing to show is that what is Andre Peking, right? So the Andre Peking is a technique that helps apps to hide their original code from being analyzed. So this technique has been widely used by both benign and malicious applications. Benign applications use this technique to hide the code so that they can protect their IP. For, well, for malicious applications, this uh, technique can be very helpful to avoid being detected. So we give an example of how things look like. So this is an application before and after the packing. As you can see, after the packing, some of the files have been added, um, especially if you can notice that there's some uh, .so files and some encrypted data files that's been added. And further investigation shows that, okay, this file, the hello gni.smiley is the file which stores the majority of original code has been reduced. If you look into this file, we can see that the, uh, the size has been reduced drastically, meaning the code has been hidden. Okay, so why it's important to the security community? Well, I guess the main reason is that the, this technique can indeed help mal uh, malware sneak into Google Play, and as reported by previous reports. So this is a part of the report from Checkpoint. As you can see, this malware named Charger uses a very heavy packing approach so that uh, Google Play cannot even detect it. So since it's so important, we performed the first large-scale measurement study to, be to better understand it using those five representative data sets. Okay, so what do we want to study? First of all, we want to get the high-level idea of how uh, different packers you know, distribute. Um, is packing technique very popular among malware, things like that? And then we would like to dive into the details and report some detailed behavioral analysis. And third, we would like to see if we can observe any kind of evolution of the packing technique over the years. And lastly, we would like to examine the existing defeating techniques, namely the unpackers, and see how they perform. All right, so the challenges. Well, the major challenge for us is that there's no existing tool that can be directly leveraged by us. Well, uh, more essentially, we would like to have a tool that could provide the following capabilities. First of all, the reliable and generic uh, unpacking so that it does not rely on any signatures. It can detect the known packers as well as the unknown packers. And second, uh, it will be able to correctly handle the native code as well as the Java code and everything happened in GNI part. And third, it will be able to understand the behaviors you know, other than just dumping the code. So it's not just an unpacker. It has to be an analysis framework. Okay, so we surveyed the existing Android unpackers. So based on our study, state-of-the-art Android unpackers have fundamental design limitations that we just cannot directly use them. So there are three, three categories of different unpackers overall. First is the signature-based unpacker. Kiss Kiss is one of the representative unpackers. So this kind of unpackers usually they use ptrace to attach to a, a target program and then search for some signatures within a memory and try memory dumping. And the second one is called the hooking-based. Um, such as the Dex Hunter. The Dex Hunter uh, modifies the Delvic virtual machine and it hooks the functions that perform the, the, uh, the, the file loading and then dump the executable file at the loading time. Um, third one is the Delvic data structure dumping technique with, uh, like Ipsphere. Uh, so what they usually do is other than dumping the executable from code from the memory, they dump the Delvic data structures that contain the instructions and then reassemble the executable using those data structures. So they all have limitations, fundamental limitations. 
Okay, the first thing is that the signatures are not reliable. It can be modified I mean, during runtime, so it's, we cannot use them because it very easily get you know, avoided. The second, um, so like hooking-based detection, since they only dump the executable file at the file loading time, it cannot handle the multi-layer unpacking because in order to handle the unpacking, you have to dump the code at the execution time, right before the execution, so that's very precise. And third, um, like the AppSphere, it cannot handle the latest Android runtime, the ART, because the ART code can be pre-compiled to native code, then rendering those data structures, um, I mean, largely empty. So when you dump data structures, you get nothing. Okay. Based on our study, then we come up with our own system called Droid Unpack. So um, the key idea is that we provide a generic unpacking based on the memory operation monitoring, aka this write then execute unpacking pattern. And then we reconstruct the data, uh, the Java level execution, semantic information. And then um, our approach is obviously a virtual machine based approach. So um, this is the overview of our system. As you can see, it's, uh, it's using a VMI technique, right? Um, it monitors everything from the outside. And then uh, we get the uh, art view and OS view to the outside. And then we further developed four different analyzers to perform all kinds of behavioral analysis, including, well, uh, the first one is the code extractor. And second, we try to detect the multi-layer unpacking, the self-modifying, uh, behaviors, and then we inspect everything happened in GNI as well. So, well, our system, we compared with the things like Renovo. Renovo is a very popular um, traditional PC unpacker. Well, compared to Renovo, um, it only handles the binary code, so we have to reconstruct the Java level information. And if we compare it to uh, Droidscope, so the Droidscope also does this uh, Java level reconstruction, but the thing is, it does not support ART, which is more complicated, as you can see, because the code can be pre-compiled or not, you know, or interpreted. So we have to retrieve the ART view from it. Uh, in order to do this, we have to reconstruct the ART semantic view. The observation shows that the ART can pre-compile the code into native or it can just execute the code as it is. So functions can be compiled or it can be just interpreted. Our observation shows that uh, compiled Java functions are always dispatched using this do call function while the interpreted functions are always dispatched using the uh, invoke functions. They are all functions within the runtime. So we first hook these two functions so that we get the correct timing because uh, th that's the correct timing for execution. Whenever a function got executed, it has to be dis dispatched first. And then once we get hooked these two functions, we got the uh, art method object. And then by using the data structures and the references between them, we, got, we eventually extract the dex file. So uh, please note that these data structures, we call them reliable because they are within the runtime and cannot be easily modified by any application. So based on the, del uh, the DEX file object, then we will be able to extract all kinds of inf information such as the uh, module, the function info, like, and the code itself, and even more, like the strings and everything. And then combined with the uh, native level op uh, memory operations, then we will be able to identify the hidden code and more. Okay, based on the system, then we conduct our study and we would like to present some interesting findings. So the first thing is the high level landscape. Well, this figure is a yearly distribution of the percentage of the PAC malware. As you can see, well, the from 2010 to 15, uh, the percentage of malware, a PAC malware it's pretty stable, like around 30, 40, 14 percent. And second figure is the packer distribution that we can see that, okay, from the uh, representative commercial packers take about 30 percent of all the packers. Others are custom packers. And third one is the train of packing distribution. 
So this shows that, okay, uh, commercial packer, even though it takes only like a 30%, it is being more and more popular. So there are about two takeaways from these, two, uh, these three figures. First of all, as we can see, uh, pack malware is a real threat. It has been there, you know, tracing back to the very early stage of uh, you know, Android. And then uh, commercial packers, which are the public services provided by big companies, have been increasingly abused by malware. Okay, so then we start our detailed analysis and report that commercial packers have adopted many unique yet unreported features for empty uh, unpacking. We have this table to summarize. Them. We're not gonna go through each, uh, each every the, uh, one of them, but we will uh, report two of the behaviors. So first one's the multi-layer unpacking. Uh, the unpacking, the packing and unpacking is not necessarily a one-time effort. There can be multiple layers between, within them. So we report that most of the commercial packers are adopting this kind of technique, uh, especially for Tencent, uh, which has more than, a, uh, which has 40, layer, 40 layers. So this uh, multi-layer unpacking technique can defeat all the existing unpackers because you have to get the precise execution time so that you can dump the correct code. And second one is even more interesting. It's called the Lipsy hooking. It's adopted by Bunkle. We observed that this is a very interesting way of defeating unpackers because some unpackers, existing unpackers like Dex Hunter, rely on the Lipsy functions such as file write to dump the code to the file. And Lipsy hooking hooks those files so uh, hook this function so that the Dex counter will just crash. And this is a clear indicator that the packers are involving, right? So, uh, well, this is just a screenshot of our system, the Droid Unpack, so show that we actually can identify the libc.so modification because the, we monitor the memory operations via the VMI technique so that we, our system is not affected. And second, we would like to report a very interesting finding. I think it's the most interesting in, in this paper. So the commercial packers have led to severe security vulnerability and data breach. Well, I guess the motivation is upon packing, we all know that commercial packer changed the behavior of a program. So I guess the question is, is the change secure? Well, um, the title is kind of spoiler because it does not. So we would like to report two security issues. One of them is the component hijacking vulnerability introduced by Qihu Packer. Well, upon packing, one vulnerable component is going to be packed and inserted into the application by the packer, means stealthily. And then we analyze the hidden component extracted by our system and find out that this packer can turn a perfectly secure application into a vulnerable application. Then we obviously, we uh, contact with them and then they acknowledged and then awarded us about $8,000. Uh, it's a nice deal. So um, why it's very severe? Because this vulnerability allows to arbitrarily replace any file within that packed application from our designated server. So this is a part of POC we provided you can see we just simply uh, con uh, construct an intent and I'll set the, uh, the action to the vulnerable component and set the file, the executable file we want to replace and then our own server and send the intent to the application. The application will automatically download the file that we've designated and replace its original, its original file. Okay, and second security issue we want to report is the information leakage from Tencent. Well, upon packing, it stealthily adds six new permissions to the original application, including sensitive ones like uh, um, internet and um, a, a phone state. And then it will collect sensitive user data like device ID, MAC address, and send them back via an insecure HTTP connection with just some simple encoding. So we utilize our system to dump the hidden code and then use FlowDray to perform the analysis. Well, um, as you can see, since this is identified by static analysis, we try to confirm it 
you know, contacting Qi Hu, but uh, no reply so far. Okay, so why these two security issues are important? Because they have big impact. Let's examine the first uh, component hydrogen vulnerability. So, like, there are a lot of popular applications that are using these two app packers. First of all, let's take Gaudo Navigation as illustration. So, Gaudo Navigation is actively used by more than 500 million users daily, including me. Okay. So, and uh, another application is the Qianyong Finance, which has been downloaded for more than 3 million times. And uh, in terms of the information leakage, well, QQ has been using the Tencent Packer, uh, and it has more than 800 million active users. So, uh, since everyone is, can use commercial packers, because they're public services, so can these packers be exploited? So, we we come up with these questions because they all claim that some kind of protection techniques are enforced. But what's the fact? Okay, so we submit five recent malware into those commercial packers and three plagiarized applications into these packers and show that other than Ali and Qihu, other packers can be successfully exploited. Means we can actually use them to pack our own malware and then for plagiarism, there's just no defense. And we further submit the original malware and the packed malware into VersTotal, and then we can, re we can observe a, a, a drastic reduction to the detection rate. And the last thing I want to report is the evolution. Android packers have been evolving very fast in the past few years. We take two indicators to illustrate this, but I'm going, only going to show one of them, which is the number of packing layers. The more packing layers it enforces, well, the more sophisticated the packers are. As you can see from 2010, they're about, so the most sophisticated packers have only like more, less than 10 layers, but when it comes to 2015, some of the, some of the packers can have even more than 1,000 layers. So, uh, to conclude, we conduct the first large-scale study on Android Packers. We report that the commercial Packers have been increasingly abused. And then severe security issues are introduced because of packing. And Android Packers are quickly evolving. And we also design and implement our own system and we will release it later. So, thank you very much. Ben Stock from CISPA. Um, can you say something, maybe I missed that, about the data set that you used? Um, okay. Where did that come from? Sure. Yeah. I would like, yeah. Oh, how do I go back? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, anyway. So uh, I'm glad you brought this up because we deliberately picked five representative data, uh, data sets. First is the seven. Uh, per, the uh, packers, commercial packers that are publicly available, mm -hmm. seven representative ones. And then we uh, actually collected more than, eight, uh, more than 93,000 malware from Verse Total. Mm -hmm. And then we, utilize, we actually created five different applications so that you know, we can serve them as ground truth you know, to perform the deep analysis to, to extract the behaviors of packers. And then, uh, uh. <laughs> Sorry. This is, this is the joy of having a PDF rather than PowerPoint or something. Anyway. Um, You're almost there, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, we are actually. Right there. Yeah, great. Oh, so, nice. and, fi yeah, and five recent malicious applications I, I actually downloaded a line to test the exploitation. And then uh, the last one is the three state-of-the-art Android packers, which I just uh, you know, described, the Kiss Kiss, Dex Hunter, and AppSphere. Okay, but I mean, you were talking about also the fraction of um, packers related to some data set. Is this just the malicious so, uh, apps, or where did you get those from? I think you're talking about the, the high-level 
landscape. Yeah, so, so basically like the 2010 to 2015. Um, right, that one, right, so the high level landscape. Mm -hmm. So uh, we use malware, yes. We use the, the 93,000 malware from Veristotal to, I mean, to conduct this kind of study. So they're all about packed malware. So okay. how the distributions of different country, uh, packers among the packed malware. Okay. Um, and have you also looked at like looking at markets, for example, like Google Play, to see what the fraction of packers is there? So if there is even so, my, my question kind of is: Is there even really that many benign apps using packers? Or if I was Google, I could just say, Ah, you're using a packer, so uh, I'd rather not let you upload um, that stuff to to the app store. So that's like one of our motivations because we, uh, no, as I illustrated in the very beginning. This is a real threat because a lot of previous research have proven that all, some, some malware are using this packing technique to sneak into the Google Play. So yes, it is, it is in the Google Play. But since we want to I mean, largely measure the, uh, the packing uh, uh, prevalence among the malware, so we directly download the applications from uh, uh, Veristotal. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, thank you.